Asia-Pacific leaders are meeting virtually tonight for the annual APEC summit. U.S. President Donald Trump and his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping are attending the meeting. Top on the agenda, COVID-19 and post-pandemic recovery and the future of the bloc. Now, for more on this, Afifa Arifin joins us live from Malaysia. Afifa, uh, get us up to speed then with what's been happening so far. We know Malaysia's Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin is also the host of the meeting. He has delivered his opening remarks. So uh, what did he say? What were the key takeaways? That's right. So Malaysia's Prime Minister Mohidin Yassin is hosting the APEC leaders meeting. This is his first uh, major summit since taking office in March this year. And in his opening remarks, Mr. Mohidin underscored the importance of this forum in terms of advancing the economic agenda for the region. He also addressed how the uh, COVID pandemic and uh, COVID-19 pandemic has had a lasting impact on the way trade and other economic priorities are viewed in this region. And that the relevance of this APEC group is now more pronounced, more more than ever, especially during uh, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, he said it is of utmost importance uh, that people uh, around the world have access to vaccines as well as healthcare technology in an affordable and equitable basis and that APEC uh, assumes a very central role in terms of spearheading the economic, uh, post, uh, economic recovery post-pandemic uh, and to find a way out of this economic downturn and to you know, navigate the region uh, towards a robust and sustainable uh, recovery and growth. Uh, the Prime Minister also outlined you know, key three priorities that Malaysia, as the host of this year's uh, meeting, uh, have laid out, which is to reaffirm, support and uh, commit to a rules-based multilateral trading system, to bolster the digital economy and also to ensure inclusive economic growth so that no one is left behind. Afifa, walk us through the next couple of days. Uh, what, what do the leaders want to achieve uh, from this year's summit? So the 21 APEC leaders, uh, as we speak, they're currently in a meeting which will last until about 10 p.m. tonight, um, after which they will adopt a new APEC policy documents and uh, hand over the chairmanship uh, to New Zealand. And uh, there are really two key things that, that we should be looking out for that the leaders are hoping to achieve this evening. Uh, the first is, of course, the leaders' declaration. Now, that's something that everyone will be looking out for. Uh, that is a consensus statement that is usually released at the end of the meeting. And that hasn't been issued for two years. Now, if you remember in 2018, APEC leaders had failed to come up with their traditional joint statement at the end of the meeting uh, in Papua New Guinea, and that was due to the uh, US China trade tensions. And the two superpowers at that time could not agree on the language of the text. Uh, there was also no leaders' meeting last year after the host Chile cancelled it due to domestic unrest. So, again, you know, very key that this leaders' declaration could, should be issued uh, tonight. Uh, both Chinese President Xi Jinping and US President uh, Donald Trump are scheduled to be at this meeting. Uh, tensions between China and U.S. are still ongoing. And we know that, you know, Mr. Trump is also still preoccupied with his own domestic matters pertaining uh, to the recent elections. And these, these are issues that, you know, observers say could overshadow the talks in, in some form or, or another. Uh, but Malaysia's Prime Minister, Muhyiddin Yassin, will hope uh, that, you know, they can avoid a repeat of that 2018 APEC summit and is confident that a joint declaration uh, can be made. Um, aside from that, the leaders are also expecting to adopt this uh, post-2020 vision, which basically contains enablers to drive economic growth in the region for the next 20 years. This document, of course, replaces the Bogor goals uh, that were set back in 1994. So we will have to see uh, whether these two documents can come out of that meeting between the APEC leaders tonight. Thank you, Afifa Arafin, reporting live from Kuala Lumpur. And for a different take on APEC, let's uh, go to Simon Marks now, who's joining us from Washington, D.C. Simon, uh, President Donald Trump is expected to join the APEC summit. Uh, if indeed he does talk, uh, what does he bring to the table? Well, he's there, Jill. I think we can confirm that. We've seen pictures of the virtual array of leaders that are participating in this meeting. Uh, and he's there. He's the only one who is not using the virtual background uh, for his video shot. He's sitting in the White House Situation Room and uh, he got up pretty early for this, uh, was uh, in his seat by about 10 to 7 uh, in the morning here on the East Coast. But what he's going to say is a total mystery. I mean, frankly, it's a 
a win that we know that he's there because his appearance was on, off, then on again. It was only finally confirmed very late last night by the White House. This is going to be his first attendance at an APEC summit since 2017. All eyes will be here on whether he gives any hint that he, re that he recognises now that he'll be leaving the White House in a few weeks' time uh, and that a political transition is underway. Does he seek to accentuate the changes that he's brought to US policy with China? Does he make any pledges about uh, those changes outlasting his presidency if indeed he does acknowledge that his presidency is about to come to an end? It's all shrouded in mystery here. No advance uh, guidance from the White House whatsoever. So quite literally, all we can say is he's there. <laughs> well, domestically uh, speaking, uh, Simon, how is he sort of uh, coming to terms with this election loss. Has Mr. Trump reacted uh, to the reaffirmed loss, in fact, in the state of Georgia? Well, he's reacted on Twitter by publishing a whole host of unsubstantiated charts that he claims show that the election was rigged, that he actually uh, again won, uh, not just in Georgia, but in other states as well. He's due to be meeting uh, representatives, Republicans from the Michigan uh, legislature today, although that's not appearing on his official schedule uh, as uh, disseminated to reporters by the White House. But he's definitely seeking uh, to use his influence to try and persuade them not to certify the results of the election in that particular state. He's absolutely doubled down in the last 48 hours, in the last 24 hours, backing the message of his lawyers that this is all a vast global conspiracy designed to steal the presidency from him and insisting that his campaign will continue in court where he's now lost more than 31 cases that he's filed all over the country. Joe Biden continues to be the president-elect, not receiving any cooperation from a Trump administration that still doesn't officially recognize this election's over. Simon Miles reporting there from Washington, D.C.